Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to give you guys some of my personal tips on how to take notes. But before we start, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's video, Amino. Amino is a mobile community network for any interest you can possibly think of, from studying to anime, gaming, and even K-pop. It's one of the best places to connect with people who share your interest. My current favorite Aminos are cosplay, anime, and studying, which are what my channel is about. On Amino, you can browse the feed to see the contents made by other users, and also take quizzes and vote on polls. We can also check out what's happening in real time by going to the community's live layer. There's always something going on here. We can see how many people are chatting and browsing through this app. You can also chat with the people in the community, either through text chat or voice chat. If you guys join the studying Amino, don't forget to check out the picture I posted on my profile which is the conclusion of today's video. You can find the download link for the app in the description box below. Okay then, with that said, let's pick it! Don't come to class without knowing the topic that's going to be discussed. You'll be clueless as to what you need or don't need to write down on your notebook. Reading the materials first will give you an overview of what you're going to learn in class. And I'm not saying that you need to memorize everything that you've read. You only need to read and memorize the materials so you're at least familiar with the things that are already in your textbook and those that are not. What you need to write down in class are the things that your teacher or professor is telling you which are not included in the book. You don't want to waste time jotting down information that you can easily find in your textbook instead of actually paying attention to what your teacher is saying in class. This is a common mistake that most students make. They often write their notes down slowly in attempt to make their notes look as well written and as organized as possible, that they end up lagging behind the lecture that's being taught in class. And after the lesson is finished, they hardly understand what they've written inside their notes at all, because they were too absorbed in writing down their notes perfectly instead of paying attention to what the teacher was explaining to them. When you're in class, don't strive to make your notes look like a masterpiece. You can simply do that at home. What I personally like to do is to bring a notebook which I'm not using anymore. For example, a notebook which I've only filled in halfway. The idea here is to write down the information that your teacher or professor is telling you as quickly as you can without worrying about how well written or organized your notes look. It's fine if your notes end up looking like a total disaster as long as you can still read and understand them later. Because of how awful my notes look, it tends to motivate me to rewrite them as soon as possible later on when I get home from class. Also, by rewriting our notes, we'll eventually reread them which forces us to study whether we want to or not. In other words, we are killing two birds with one stone. It will help you take your notes quicker than if you write the whole words. Just make sure you understand your own abbreviations, otherwise you'll get confused when you rewrite the notes later. Sometimes when our teachers or professors are teaching us new things, they'll often go too deep into the topic at hand and they'll start talking about instances that aren't very important at all or at least aren't going to be tested in our exams. Know the difference between the important information and the unimportant ones. Here is an example of an important information. Leonardo da Vinci was born on 15th of April 1452. In his own time, he was known as Leonardo or as Il Florentine since he lived near Florence and was famed as an artist, inventor, and thinker. Now here is an example of an unimportant information. Did you know that Leonardo da Vinci's favorite food was rum raisin chocolate ice cream? Just like that one old song. Rum raisin chocolate ice cream. Rum raisin chocolate ice cream. Rum raisin chocolate ice cream. Got it. You should still listen to what your teacher is telling you, but you don't need to write it down on your notebook. So you won't end up wasting your energy and also your book pages by writing down those trivial information. Now that we've tackled the tips for taking notes in class, let's move on to the tips for rewriting the notes at home. Most people are already familiar with this, but they're still not used to using it. We tend to write our notes sequentially because we assume that our brain works in a linear way, but the fact is, the brain doesn't normally work in a linear way. For instance, we rarely remember the full sentences from what we've read or heard, but rather the single words. I'll try giving you guys a simpler explanation so you guys can understand it better. Now, if I show you this piece of blank paper and ask you to think of an apple and place it anywhere on the paper, you'll most likely put it in the middle of the paper. Also, the apple will be in bright colors instead of black and white. That is the way our brain works and that's what we use in mind mapping. To make a mind map, basically you have to start in the middle of the paper, use preferably one word on each line, use colors, draw pictures, use symbols, signs, and arrows, 
Make the details in your map unique and use your imagination. If you guys would like to know more details about making a mind map, then you can try doing a research on Google because I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video because it will take too long to explain it. Now, I'm going to show you guys an example of how I make my mind map for my game design and programming lesson that I learned in college years ago, way back in my prime days. First, I take the topic and put it in the middle of the paper. The word user interface reminds me of a face, so I'm going to draw a face mask to represent it. Next, I look at the outline. There are six subtopics, so I'm drawing one branch for each subtopic, starting from the main topic pointing outwards. The keyword for the first subtopic is introduction, and introduction reminds me of a handshake, so I'm going to draw that. It doesn't matter if your pictures don't actually have anything to do with the materials at hand, as long as you can associate them with the things that you need to memorize. The most important thing about mind map is the result. The pictures can be as silly as possible. It's your mind map, you're free to do whatever you want, as long as you are able to understand it. The ability to find the right keywords determine how well you can receive information from a book or a lecture. If you can't find the right keywords, then you'll be less able to find the main points. And because of that, you'll have to devote more time for revision and also to find some facts in your notes. Here's a simple example on how to find the right keywords. Take a look at the short story. Benny merrily went to the market to buy a loaf of bread. When he arrived at the market, he saw that the shelves were empty. Benny was very shocked. His breath started to get erratic, and he began hyperventilating. The shop assistant then approached Benny and handed him the last loaf of bread in the store. Benny's breathing went back to normal as he accepted the bread. He paid for it in the cashier before happily going back to his house, hugging the bread in his arms. Now, the key to finding the right keywords is to take a look at these three things, which are nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Nouns denote things and they carry the information in the text. Verbs denote activities things that happen or what someone does. Adjectives describe how things look like. They're linked to nouns and modify their meaning in limiting or describing them. We mainly use these three things when we pick keywords, no matter what note-taking techniques we use, because they provide us with the information we need. The nouns are the most important ones. This doesn't mean that you should exclude other words, because keywords are simply the words that give you the best conclusion. Now let's go back to the previous story and highlight all the nouns. If we take out all the other words aside from the nouns, the story doesn't really make sense at all. But we do know that there's a person named Benny who has something to do with the bread and the market. Now let's add the verbs and the adjectives into the story. Now that we have the keywords, we can easily count out the words that aren't really necessary. And that is how we find the right keywords. From there, you can use the keywords to form your mind map. Even if you don't use mind maps, you can still remember the keywords easily without having to take notes of the whole story. And memorizing keywords is surely easier than memorizing the whole paragraph. I don't think mind maps work well with subjects such as maths and science. So for subjects which involve a lot of numbers and formulas, I take my notes down using a normal linear method. But I make sure to use a lot of colors so I won't get bored when I read the notes later. So those were all the tips that I could share with you guys. Now I'm going to summarize them by using a mind map. Today I talked about two types of note taking, taking notes at class and rewriting them at home. The things that you should do when you take notes at class are read the materials ahead of time, don't spend time making your notes look perfect, use abbreviation, and think about which information is important and which is not. When you rewrite your notes at home, you should use mind maps, find the right keywords, which consists of nouns, verbs, and adjectives, and use a colorful linear method. So that's all from me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video, and thank you for those of you who have subscribed to me. If you haven't, then be sure to click on my face below. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends if you enjoyed watching it, and I will see you on my next one. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye.